Hi, this is the uh, uh, lecture over video World 2.3, and uh, this one's kind of a broad subject in a sense because it's got a lot to talk about. We are trying to simplify it a little bit on 2.3 because we're no longer going to be talking about parallel lines and perpendicular lines, at least in 2.3. We're going to wait till we get the systems of equations a little bit later in the course. And then we'll throw those terminology at you, but we're not here. We're just going to stick. We're going to keep basically keep it simple. And uh, so, so slope, okay, is discussing the rate of change of a line. And that's kind of what we're talking about here is line. So, uh, but it's also known as the steepness of the slant. Okay, the steeper it is, uh, the higher the slope is going to be. So a slope of five is going to be uh, steeper than a sl slope of, let's say, 2. So, uh, but the slope formula is the difference of the y's over the difference of the x's. Now, the reason I got rise over run is because this is the rise. That, that is the difference between this y-coordinate and this y-coordinate on this one. That's the rise. That's why a lot of people call it the rise over the run. And the y difference of the y-coordinates, the, the span between here and here, that's the rise. So, and then the run is the difference of their x coordinates. And so the run is the x2 minus the x1, and the y1, y2 minus the y1 is the rise. A lot of people ask, me, well, do the subscripts matter? Does If I have y1 minus y2, not really. It, it doesn't matter the direction you're going, but you got to keep it consistent. In other words, if you take this y coordinate and subtract this y coordinate, y2 minus y1, then you have to subtract x2 minus x1 in the same order. You can't, you can't just go back and forth. What's going to happen is, if you do that, is your slopes are going to be backwards. Meaning, if your slope is supposed to be 2 thirds and you do that, it's going to be negative 2 thirds. So it's going to be the opposite of what you want. And speaking of the sign, it, when the, the graph is going up, when it's increasing, it will have a positive slope. And so if you end up with a negative slope, you know you made that mistake when I just referred to. Um, the negative slope is when the graph is going down. And then the zero slope is a horizontal line because the, the rise is zero. And um, so because if you have a horizontal line, basically what's going on is you got two y coordinates that are exactly the same. And when you subtract them, that will be zero on top. The rise will be zero. And zero divided by any number is still zero. So that's why a horizontal line has zero slope because the rise is zero. Now, the undefined slope is when you have a vertical line, and when you have a vertical line, the run is the same. So, because there, there'd be a gap between these two numbers, but there is no span on the y. So, so the, the run ends up being zero. And since zero, the run is in the denominator, because it's rise over run, and runs in the denominator, if it's zero, you'd be divided by zero. And that's when you get problems, you cannot divide by zero. So, and that's a whole other topic in itself. But anyway, so those are your four possibilities. Alrighty. Now, the types of equations that we're going to be dealing with in 2.3, uh, general form, slope-intercept form, point-slope form, horizontal lines, and vertical lines. And I put what they are respectively. Again, I did this in class. I'm not going to can't go into great detail on these little overviews, but these are the ones that we talk about. But not this one so much. The number three here, I don't use that one myself. Because I can use the, uh, this one right here, number two. I can memorize one instead of having to memorize two. And number two would take care of everything for me anyway. So I don't really need the third one. Some people swear by number three and like it, but I don't use it. So, and, um, but, because I like, like I said, well, I like keep things simple. So, so example one, find the slope. So what you got going on is you got two points on a line. And you can draw the picture if you like, uh, two, three which is there, and negative 1, 4 right there. So the graph is going such and like this. So just by observation, you can tell the slope is negative. Now let's see what it actually is. So you subtract the y coordinate, so it's 3 take away 4, and then 2 take away negative 1. 3 take away 4 is negative 1 on top, and then 2 take away a negative 1 is 2 plus 1. 2 negatives make a positive, so it's negative 1 third. So you go down one and over three. So that's got a slope of negative one third. So it's not too steep, but it's pretty steep. So that's how you find the slope. And again, it's a negative slope because the graph is going down. It's decreasing, in other words. 
This one, uh, we're going to graph this one, and we're going to do it by the slope-intercept form. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do is solve for y. And uh, now, if you if you look at this really close, now you can remember back in 2.2, we did this one by intercepts. We're going to do this slightly different this time. Okay, you can do it by intercepts back in 2.2, but if you want to do it by point slope, check this out. So you get uh, negative 5y equals negative 4x plus 20. Subtract 4x to the other side. So y ends up being 4 over 5x minus 4. 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4. So in this particular case, the slope is 4 fifths, and the y-intercept, and remember, we have to do it by ordered pairs, 0, negative 4. So, and then if you graph that, 0, negative 4 is right there, so that's an intercept. And then the slope is 4 over 5. Rise 4, run 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So rise 4 and run 5. And we get the same answers if what we would have done if we would have done it by intercepts. So this is another way to graph a line. And on this one, x equals 3. There's no y coordinate, so that tells me right then that's a kind of a special kind of equation. And so x equals 3, if you look down the list, is a vertical line, x equals a. So on this particular case, it's a vertical line going through 3. And a lot of people get these mixed up. You know, some people would want to, if they see that graph, they want to say y equals 3. They don't necessarily want to say x equals 3. And how I keep it, keep it in my mind, because I, I always get confused with this with myself, is that if you have a vertical line, every point on that line has an x coordinate of what? Three. So this point right here has an x coordinate three one. This point has an x coordinate three two. So if you ever get mixed up, find a bunch of points on the graph and see what's consistent. This one's got this one's consistently has an x coordinate of three. So that's how you kind of keep them straight if you can't memorize it. So so but example three is a vertical line. So here's your overview of two point three.